not going to walk through this one as slowly as I have the last couple because you've seen a few examples there, but just a couple quick takeaways from this practice problem. Hopefully you got the right answers uh, that every time you have H2SO4, that's going to break up into a, a sulfate ion and two hydrogen ions. So the molarity of the H plus is going to be twice that of the solution itself. Then another good idea, good habit to get into, since we're talking about an acid, it should have a really low pH. And it does, somewhere below 7 there. Okay, last example here for today, and then one more for you to try. Uh, what if you wanted to go the other way? What if you knew the pH of the solution and you wanted to know its molarity? So the ones we've done so far have been the opposite, right? I gave you the molarity, you found the pHs. What if we wanted to go the other way? So if I gave you a solution of calcium hydroxide and I told you the pH of the solution is 11.4, what's the molarity of that solution? So Calcium hydroxide, the chemical formula for calcium hydroxide is CaOH2. All of the bases and acids that we're going to use in this class are strong acids and bases. So it's going to completely break up into its ions. What that means is we're going to get two hydroxide ions when that guy breaks up. It would look something like this. Right. So, how am I going to tackle this problem? First off, I'm talking about a base, it's got hydroxide, but a pH. And a lot of times, the whole reason pOH exists, which you probably haven't really heard of until maybe the last couple days, is just for convenience sake when talking about bases, sometimes it's more convenient to work with pOHs instead of pHs. So I'm going to take that pH, and since I know the pH and the pOH always have to add up to 14, I'm going to find the pOH since I'm working with a base. Sometimes just the math works out a little bit nicer that way. So 2.60 is my pOH. From my pOH, I could solve for the OH minus concentration because that's always 1 times 10 to the negative pOH. So 1 times 10 to the negative 2.60 would tell me my hydroxide concentration. 1 times 10 to the negative 2.60 is what we want. It's just not a properly written number. So I have to go to my calculator and have my calculator convert that for me into a proper number. And your calculator should tell you something like this. Well, that's the molarity of the hydroxide ion. But it wanted the molarity of the whole solution, the whole thing calcium hydroxide, not just hydroxide. So just like in the previous problems, I'm going to take that capital M and expand that idea that there's that many moles of hydroxide per liter of solution. I want to go this time from ion to solution. The previous problems I was going from solution to ion. Well I have two hydroxides per calcium hydroxide. I want the hydroxides to cancel out. So I'm going to put the two moles worth of hydroxide on the bottom for every one mole of solution. The moles of hydroxide cancel out. That means the molarity of the solution is half that of your ion. So it's going to be 0 0.00125 molar, roughly. Remember uh, sig figs and everything with uh, moles and, or uh, excuse me, with logs and exponents get a little bit messy. Okay. Um, now you try one. All right, you pause the video. I'll put the answer here real quick, uh, and you'll see if you're right. Your 
pH, we know, of our sulfuric acid solution. So we got to think about what sulfuric acid is. That would break up into two H pluses and a sulfate. Right? When sulfuric acid breaks up, looks like that. So the pH of our solution is 2.7. Since we're talking about pH and we're working with an acid, there's no need this time to go to pOH. It probably is more convenient to work with pH since we're talking about an acid. So if our pH is 2.7 and H plus is 1 times 10 to the negative pH. 1 times 10 to the negative 2.7 is our H plus concentration. It's what we want, it's just not a properly written number. So we throw that in our calculator and you'll get a number something like this for your H plus concentration. And then to get that into a molarity of your whole solution, not just molarity of your ion. I'm going to use the idea that there's two moles of H plus per mole of sulfuric acid. And once again, the molarity of your whole solution is going to be half that of the ion. So you'll get something like 9.98 times 10 to the negative fourth molar or your calculator might be displaying that as just a traditional number. So maybe it looks something like that.